Now we will talk about try and catch mode, right? How we are doing it and uh, how to you know handle all these things. Uh, let me create another file. So this is exception demo one. I'll copy this. Paste it, exception demo two. And we will work on exception demo two now. Okay. Now, let's understand that this is your statement. And here, this particular line, I am copying this and putting it here. Here. Right. Now, it's saying that handle this thing. Right. So, it's saying that uh, unhandled exception file not found or something like that, right? Okay, but we have put it inside the try can. This kind of error should not come. What it is saying that you handled it, but but you're saying I want to handle it as an arithmetic exception. No, no, no. Let's understand. File related thing is file input file not found exception. So it's saying. There is an unheld, unhandled exception file not found. So Java itself or the ID itself is suggesting you that what you have to do. So you can put another catch block here. You can say catch. So in a single uh, in a block of code, in the same block of code, you can have multiple exceptions. It may happen, right? So here I will write catch file file not found exception fe you can give any name i am giving the name as it is and then here you can handle it. so it's not just system dot 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 print on it it's up to you what you want to write so i'll say file not present then only this will come. If file is present at that particular location, it, it will not have any issue. If the file is not present at my desktop, Java folder and all, right, then it will show me error. It's like this, file not present. I am just writing file not present, nothing else. This time, if I'll run this, now this is an interview question. This is like interview question. They will say that these three are the lines. So what will be the output? So the output, if you see some problem, why num1 by num2? It's not showing me this. It is not showing me this. What is the reason? The reason is because the exception is there at line number, let's say 16 itself. So once this will occur, it will catch arithmetic exception. And because you have put in the block, right? So it will not going to execute all these things, okay? So if you want to handle file not for so what is a good practice? What is a good practice? In a single block of code, you should not handle multiple type of exception, right? So for this, it should be arithmetic exception. For file not file not found, this line you can put again the try catch, right? It's like for single line of code, also you can put try catch. As of now, as of now. Let me make this as uh, 10 so that num1 and num2 will not be like, you know, it will not throw the exception. Now, this time, if I'll run this, it will show me num3 is 2. That's fine. And then it is showing me file not present. Okay. Why? Because now there is a problem at line number 18 and we are catching it and we are handling it by showing the message file not present, okay? So one try block can have multiple catch block and based on the exception, it will show you what kind of exception it is. But can I put, what will be the problem? Let's say if I'll say catch, okay? And in the block, I am putting the parent and I'm saying something like exception, exception caught. I'm just writing something. 
exception. It is not allowing me. Why? It's saying that unreachable catch block for arithmetic exception. What it is saying that you have already handled it through the parent class. And now you're saying that arithmetic exception, file not found exception. No, it's saying that you have already handled. Why you want to go to the specific handle now? It's like this. So you should not do this thing. If you want to do it, do it here. Let me close this first. If you want to do it, do it here. At the end, at the end. Because if you know the specific um, exception, it's better you write it like that. So what this means? If file not found exception is not there, if arithmetic exception is not there, and we don't know what kind of exception can come in my code block, then simply write catch exception at the end. So that if nothing is there, it will go to the, uh, you know, this particular part. If not, no, no other kind of exception is there, it will go here. It's like this. Okay. So as of now, it, it is able to find that file not found exception is there and it is not going here. It is not going to line number 28. There is one more block which is called finally. Okay. So let me write it. What is finally? I'll tell you. Finally. So it's a block of code. So what finally does it, whether there is exception or not, it will be executed under finally. So you want to do something finally, means after executing this line of code, you want to do something, right? So you can put finally block, okay? So this will be executed once everything is done, after that, it is executing. I am under final. Okay. Then it will go to the line number 35 and onwards, if you see here. Right. So this is how try catch block works. One try can have multiple catch block. Finally is optional if you want to write. What how finally block works it, it will be executed. So let's comment out this catch block. Let's assume that we are not handling the exception. I have commented out, um, no, not finally, till this point. I have commented the catch part, okay? But then it is saying that at least file input stream should be caught. Okay, I, I'm commenting out as of now this, okay? Because, you know, this is mandatory. This is checked exception. So you cannot run it without, you know, solving that. So as of now, there is no catch. Okay. There is no catch block. And I'm getting, I'm under finally. Okay. So let, let's make at num2 as 0 again. Because then it will be arithmetic exception. But we, we, are, we have commented out. That means we are not, uh, we have not written that, let's say. Right. We have just put try and finally. So this time, if I'll execute this, it is showing me that there is a divide by zero exception, but it is also showing I am under finally. That means irrespective of whether you will catch the exception or not, finally will always be executed. Okay. It's like this. So sometimes you know, in interview, there is a good question about what is what is the difference between final, finally, and there is, I think, finalized, something like that. So read about it. Read about those things. As of now, let me uncomment that. We'll see one more example. Very common mistake, which we do. I'll show that thing now. Let's create one more program. New, no, let's copy that or let's create a new module, new class. And here we'll make exception 
demo three make a main function also. Okay. Okay. Now here I will call a function. So I'll say um fun a fun a okay i'm calling this so there should be a function fun a okay all right yeah there should be a function right fun a somewhere defined so i'm writing public static void fun a and this is doing something right so here i am writing System dot out dot println. I am under funny. I am under one a. Okay, and now let's do something. So here we want to have uh, one array. So we we can say integer um d sub array is equals to new int. The size of this array is, let's assume, is four, fine. And um, or what? Or another way is you can you know put all these values also instead of just declaring it. You can put the array values also. This is one way. And then you have to write d zero is something, d one is something, d two is something, d four is something. Okay, let me do it. D zero is 12 okay d1 d1 is 34 okay i can write in single line also d2 because you're putting semicolons right so it's fine you can do it and d3 sorry d3 is equals to uh, 9 okay here is D0, right? So I can print all these values. How I can print it? I, I can use for loop. So I'll say for, for integer f is equals to zero. f is, f is um, less than three, f plus plus, and here, just I want to print those values, right? So I'll say system dot or dot print ln d of f. Everyone agree with me that this will print. This is going to print d0, d1, d2, d3, right? And let me make it less than four because I want to go from zero to three, basically. Less than four means zero to three exactly zero one two three right so this is printing me i am under fun a and then 12 34 44 uh and nine right because these are the values present at d0 d1 d2 d3 d4 so just till d3 not d4 now by mistake if somebody will put here six right instead of putting the exact length of this array will put six. So what will happen this time? If I'll run this thing, it is showing me one exception. It's printing me, but after that, it's saying me that exception in thread and it's array index out of bound exception. Index four is out of the bounds of length four and where it is. It is at line number seven, okay, because you called it at the seventh line and it is at li exact line number 20. So it's saying there is some problem here, but then you will get confused. I did not do any mistake. The system dot out dot print ln looks perfect, but then you should see the error message that what it is saying. It's saying that you are putting somewhere it will, the F will become four, so you are saying D4, which is not allowed. Till D3, it's fine. Once you will say D4, D5, D6, it will show you exception. So handle it. Now, what you should do is you should say try 
start the code here, start the code end here and say catch. And now, because you are working with the arrays, so it's better you handle it. What you have to handle? Array related exceptions. So array index out of bounds exception. And then whatever you want to do. So in the catch block, then it's up to you how you want to handle it, right? As of now, I'm just writing that some issue, some issue with, 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 with index. Okay, we say it index, zero, one, two, three is index, okay? This time, if I'll run this program, right, it, it is showing me some issue with index and it is not stopping our execution, right? Means if there is further program here, there is further line of code after this, it will, it will be executed, right? It will not stop our execution, right? So this is a better way. Now you'll understand how to use, why to use exception. Because even if there is some error we did at line number 18 with this statement, it is handling it. That's why we should handle it. Okay. Now, one more thing is, this is like you are catching the exception. There is one more term which is called throw exception. So that I want to show you with one more function and that will be, let's say, fun b. Another function, fun b. Okay. Exact same line of code. Exact same type of code for fun b also. Just one difference will be there. Hold on. It won't take much time. So here it is fun b this, this time. Fun b. And instead of uh, putting try cat, let's see what kind of, what other things we can do. Right. So here, you can here also write throw. You can say throws. Uh, just a minute. Array index bound of exception. So one way is put try catch. Another way is throw array index out of bound exception. So what it will do, you know, whenever there is a problem in any of these lines, not just where you are putting try catch, it's like anywhere in this code block, if there is any, um, problem, it will throw the exception. Got it? It will throw the exception. It's like this. Now, when you will run this, it's showing me that there is a problem. It is executing it, but still it is showing me that there is some problem at line number 38. Okay. So either you use try catch or you can use it here. Throws. Better to use try catch. The reason is, the reason is you can put try catch wherever you think there, there, there will be kind of exception. When you are throwing it like this, right? It's is because we are making just five to six lines of code. That's why you are you may think that it's very easy and we should use it. But if it is a let's say six hundred lines of code and then you have to understand that where the problem has occurred. There may be multiple array index bound of exceptions. So it will not show you all the places where that exception has come. It will just catch the very first instance of it. Okay. There is one more thing, throw, just throw. So that we will talk maybe in future session. Okay. As of now, in a simple word, we, we understood about what are the types of exception, how to handle those things, and how to handle it practically. Okay, fine guys, that's it for today.